suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. It is with pride and humility that we accept the opinion of you, the listener, who have voted suspense the best dramatic show of the year. Now to the upcoming story, a gentle story of three gentle people with modest murder in their hearts and quiet greed in their souls. Sort of people you're apt to run into almost any place at almost any time. Listen, listen then, as Ray Noble stars with Miss Lee Patrick in just one happy little family, which begins in exactly one minute. Memo on medals. Information you may not know about our military decorations. One of the most famous holders of the Silver Star was General John J. Pershing. He was awarded the medal in recognition of service during the Philippine Campaign, before he went on to greater fame as Commander-in-Chief of the American Expeditionary Forces in World War I. Bestowing a trophy of honor in recognition of distinguished achievement goes back to the early days of civilized man. Probably the oldest record of a decoration is a wreath of laurel which was used to crown winners of athletic contests in ancient Greece. It is interesting to note that versions of the laurel wreath appear even today on many modern medals of various nations. In the United States Navy, it is a tradition to award bonus points for advancement and rating based on medals and citations. For example, five extra points are given to winners of the Medal of Honor. As unique accolades for valor and superior service, medals symbolize our nation's recognition of individual dedication to the cause of freedom. And now... Just one happy little family, starring Ray Noble with Miss Lee Patrick. A tale well calculated to keep you in... I'm sitting in the parlor, Mr. Dunkel, and catch your breath. <laughs> yes, thank you. I believe I will. <laughs> After all, one doesn't carry a bride over the threshold every day, my dear Victoria. <laughs> and certainly never as lovely a one as you. Oh, Mr. Dunkel, come this way. Oh, this beautiful parlor. So elegant. It was my dear departed favorite room. Ah, uh, Victoria, we are indeed fortunate to find each other. You alone in this big house. And me alone with, with no house. It, it does work out nicely, doesn't it? With your money in my house, we should be able to... Uh, what was it the lady said uh, at the uh, Cupid's Lair Friendship Club? Oh, yes. Spend our golden year together. How well she put it. Uh, you poor thing, you must be tired. Let me fix you a nice cup of tea. Good idea. My wife, Jane, uh, rest her soul, uh, used to say it was just the thing to perk a person up. You just sit and rest. I won't see a minute. Mr. Dunker, Charlie Green, Darcy, Pico, Tilan, Miss. Now, what does all that mean? They're teas. Which kind would you like? Oh, oh, just plain tea will be fine. All right. Why? What a lot of bottles and jars. All of these teas. Oh, heavens no. They're herbal things. I'm an herb expert, you know. No, I didn't. It's just a sort of a hobby with me. Oh, here we are. Ah, it won't be a minute. Oh, you have quite a collection here. Hmm. New skin. Now, what's that used for? It's mostly for love potions, but sometimes I use it for dreams. Mm hmm. Fox blend. Hemlock. Arsenic. Strychnine. Victoria, aren't these dangerous to have around? Of course not. You just have to know how to use them. Oh, but strychnine and arsenic, these aren't us. Oh, don't you give it another thought. I told you I'm an expert. Now, come along. We'll have tea in the parlor. Victoria, my dear, that was delicious tea. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dunkel. Now I'm sure you'd like to unpack and get settled. After all, this is your home too now. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. Yes, my dear. The two of us are one until death do us part. Oh, please, Mr. Uncle. 
Let us not talk about things like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Victoria, but one must be prepared to face facts. I think we should make our will as soon as possible. Uh, I have a confession to make, Mr. Dunkel. I already had my lawyer take care of it. He'll bring the papers for us to sign tomorrow. Ah, oh, my dear Victoria, you think of everything. <laughs> I try to, my dear. Now, shall we get unpacked? All right. Oh, don't try to carry too many valises at once, Mr. Dunkel. Those stairs are steep. Very well, Victoria. I'll just take this large one first. And I'll carry this little black one. No, 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 no not that one. I- I'll take it. No, I'll just get it. Oh, 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 my God. Oh. What a vicious-looking lot of knives. Are they yours? Of course they're mine. What on earth are you doing with them? Well, when I retired, I just couldn't part with them. They were my favorite. Might I ask what your position was before you retired? I thought I told you. I was a butcher. Butcher? Yes. My wife, Mary, rest her soul, used to say that I was the most distinguished butcher in town. Uh, didn't you say your wife's name was Jane? Jane? Uh, Why, well, it was uh, Mary Jane. Yes, that was it. Mary Jane, a wonderful woman. Mr. Dunkel, you'll find the guest room at the head of the stairs. Guest room? But, Victoria, the two of us are one. Not tonight, Mr. Dunkel. My door will be locked. Locked? Locked. And it will remain locked until the lawyer comes tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Dunkel. There we are. All signed and sealed. What is his is yours, and what is yours is his, and vice versa. Oh, I'm glad it's over, Mr. Alderdice. I think wills are so depressing. Yes, it's so reassuring, my dear. Yes, I suppose they are. And now, if you will excuse me, I'll see to the sea. Well, Duncan, I must say you are to be congratulated. You have a fine woman for a wife. Yes, a fine woman. Duncan, make her happy. You can do it. She's had such a sad life, losing her husband, one after the other. Uh, husband? Yes, poor woman. All seven. Every one that found is a dollar at first seen. And then, one by one, gone. <laughs> Been so hard on her, and now with this house mortgage to the hilt. Mortgage? Oh, Dunkel. What's the matter? <sighs> well, are you ill? Dunkel? Victoria, quick, I think Mr. Dunkel has fainted. In a moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Overhead, the moon is seen. Hold it, Daphne, hold it. Oh, hi, Joe. Guess what, honey? I'm trying out for the operetta. As what? A singer. You could have fooled me. I was just practicing one of the songs. Well, I don't think you quite fit the role. Why not? Well, if this version of the student prince is like the version I know, that particular number is sung by a tenor. Oh. Not that you don't come close, but I think you'd better stick to being a housewife. But I want to be a singer. Daphne, honey, a singer you'll never be. I could take lessons. Yeah, but lessons cost money. Money better invested for us in savings bonds. You and your old savings bonds. I can't help it, honey. I just can't get over the way those savings bonds pay off. Four dollars for every three. That's what I call an investment. What good do they do me now? A lot. The money we put in those bonds every payday helps keep America strong and protects you and me. No bonds, maybe no operetta. Ever think of that? I still want to be a singer. Well, when those bonds start bringing in the green, if you still want to sing, you'll pay for the lessons and more. Good. Gee, if those bonds mature as fast as you say, I better start practicing now just so that I'll be ready. Overhead, the moon is green. Daphne, Daphne, did anyone ever tell you you have a bad voice? Everyone. And now, starring Ray Noble with Miss Lee Patrick, Act Two of. Just one happy little family. Mr. Dunkel, why are you looking at me so strangely? Why didn't you tell me this house was mortgaged? Oh, it's only a little second mortgage. A second mortgage? Why didn't you tell me about your, your being married before? About my dear departed husband? No, about your dear departed husband. Oh, let's not talk about them. We have each other now for our golden years. Let us forget the past. How familiar that sounds. 
Sylvia rests her soul. Always said it was better to forget the past. Who is Sylvia? Well, she was my wife. A wonderful woman. But you said your wife's name was Jane. Then she was Mary. And now Sylvia. Don't tell me her name was Mary Jane Sylvia. Well, no, no, quite. It was like this. Mr. Dunkel, how many wives have you had? Four. And where are they now? They, they passed on. Oh, why? Oh, how could you? But you've had seven husbands. Oh, all right, all right, Mr. Dunker. Let's not quarrel. Let us live for the future. Maybe there is a little second mortgage on the house, but with your retirement money... Victoria, my dear, there is something you should know about my retirement. What about it? You are retired, aren't you? Yes. Well, not exactly retired. Uh, I'm bankrupt. Bankrupt? Then you don't have any money? Not a penny, I'm sorry to say. Oh, this is a terrible blow to me. I had such plans. I imagine you did, involving arsenic and strychnine and me. Oh, now, Mr. Dunkel, confess. Didn't you plan to carve me up like a popular? Well, just because you prefer arsenic is no reason to berate me. Arsenic is neat and tidy, certainly not like the mess you must make. I beg your pardon. I told you I'm a first-class butcher. I'm sure you are, Mr. Dunkel. And that gives me an idea. What kind of an idea? I have an idea. We might make a good team. A team? Yes. We both need money, and since we're both rather expert, why not work together? On whom? We can place uh, an advertisement in the papers and rent the guest room. It, it might work at that. There's, there's plenty of room in the cellar. And the flower garden is nice and soft. Yes. Hardly any work to dig it up. Victoria, I think it's a splendid idea. Then we'd better advertise at once. There is a mortgage payment due. I don't know, Victoria. Five applicants so far, and not a one had any money. And even worse, most of them had relatives here in the city. Oh, have patience, Mr. Dunkel. We'll find someone. Oh, see? Don't give up the ship, Mr. Dunkel. Yes? You're both just as I knew you would be. So sweet and saintly. You must have the wrong house, child. But I can't have. Oh, I hurried so. I did so want to be the first one here. I just know it's what I'm looking for. Uh, what is? The room. The advertisement in the paper said oh, you had that. Why didn't you say so? Do come in, child. Thank you. Oh, it's so beautiful in here. What's your name? Golden Link. Golden Link. Oh, what a lovely sound. May I have the room? May I please? I have money, lots of it, right here in my purse. I show you. I keep it tied up in this handkerchief. My, that is a lot of money. Aren't you afraid of losing it? Goodness, no. And besides, I can get much more at home. Ah, you have a home. Uh, and a family, I suppose? I don't have a family. My daddy and mommy went to heaven together, and I was so lonely in that big house. Oh, uh, Big house? Oh, very big. Here, I have a picture of it in my purse. See? Hmm. That is a big house. It must have 40 rooms. I think there are 52. And you have no relatives? No. I, I'm all by myself. Oh, poor dear. What well, every girl needs a family. I want one more than anything. Oh, please let me stay. I could be so happy here. Of course you can stay. You're just the kind of dear person we were hoping for. Sit right now, Mr. Dunkel. Your breakfast is on the table. Golden link will go in a minute. Do, do you have everything ready? Oh, yes. Right here. All mixed with a hot chocolate. I got the recipe from a very old witch's handbook, but I've never tried it before. I do hope it works. I hope so, too, my dear. I can't think of any other way to get her power of attorney. Mr. Dunkel, are you sure it will be legal? Oh, of course. The same thing worked with Sylvia. Uh, or, or was it Mary Jane? Oh, well, let, let's do be careful. Golden Link is such a sensitive girl, I couldn't bear to hurt her feelings. <laughs> you have grown fond of her in these two weeks she's been with us, haven't you, my dear? I really have. I don't know what it is, but... Something about to reminds me of myself when I was a girl. It's just like having a daughter. Uh, did you find her a nice spot in the garden? I looked, but it's all too rocky. Oh, just like our own daughter, and we have to put her in that awful cellar. 
The garden would be so much nicer. She loves flowers, so... Good morning, Daddy Dunkel. And Mommy Dunkel. Sit down, dear. I have a lovely surprise for you. Here, I made it especially for you. Oh, chocolate. What a heavenly idea. You do so much for me. Drink it while it's hot. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. So different tasting. The recipe is quite old. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Oh, but it's making me so sleepy. It certainly works quickly. Doesn't it, though? Now we'll make sure. Golden Link. Golden Link. Can you hear me, child? I hear you. Now, Golden Link, I want you to do something for me. It's very simple. I want you to write your name on this piece of paper. Yes, Mommy Dunkle. Whatever you say. There. Here you are, Mr. Dunkle. All signed. Amazing, Victoria. But how are you going to bring her out of the trance? Simple. All potions have a counter potion. Here, Golden Mink, my dear. Drink some more chocolate. It will be good for you. Yes, Mommy Dunkle. <sighs> Golden Link, was the chocolate good? Oh, yes, it was wonderful. Such a nice change from tea. You, you are all right? Of course, I feel wonderful. So wonderful that I think I'll compose some poetry today. Maybe a sonnet. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll write a sonnet about my little family. Another one? We must have written two dozen. Oh, I never get tired of writing about my little family. <laughs> well, Victoria, now that the paper is signed, I'll get my things ready. I suppose you'd better... I must say, it will feel good to slip into a white coat again. If only I hadn't thrown away my straw hat. In a moment, we continue with the third act of... Suspense. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Day after day, month after month, since April 4th, 1949, the activities of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization have moved steadily forward on many fronts. This complete cooperation must and will continue because the concept of national self-sufficiency is out of date. Countries of the free world are interdependent and only in genuine partnership and by combining their resources Sharing tasks in many fields can progress and safety be found. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now, starring Ray Noble with Miss Lee Patrick, Act Three of Just One Happy Little Family. <laughs> Doctor, must you do that? That sound gets my teeth on edge. These knives have to be razor sharp, my dear. A point of professional pride with me. I'll be ready in a minute. Oh, surely you're not thinking of doing it now. May as well. But she's writing a sonnet to us. Can't it wait just a while longer before we send her away? I suppose so. After tea time, then. Golden Link does so like tea time, and I hate to disappoint her. Oh, very well. Oh, I can't bear to stay here and listen to that bit of sound. Golden Link, child, why are you standing here by the door? I, I wanted you to hear my song. Oh, of course, my dear. And let me see what you've written so far. A silver sunshine cabbage and the blue and purple roses bend to... But it's not finished, child. I, I can't think. Not now. I don't... Feel well, Mommy Dunk. Oh, you poor dear. Why don't you go rest in your room and maybe you'll think of something. Yes, I'll do that. Maybe by tea time I'll think of something. Golden Link, 
got a lovely surprise. You're making tea for us. But you're not having any. No. I just so love the chocolate you made this morning, I decided to have it again instead of tea. Mm, but it doesn't have the flavor yours has. No, I imagine not. Now, these chili sandwiches are just the way I like them, all sprinkled with sugar. Here, Daddy Dunkel, have another. I believe I will. Huh? Truly delicious. I, I enjoy jelly sandwiches with my... my tea. Oh, oh, oh. Uncle, what's the matter? Do you have a touch of indigestion? It's not indigestion. He's dead. Dead? Don't be ridiculous, child. Why should he be dead? I poisoned him. You poisoned him? Oh, yes. I hope you're not angry that I use so many of your herbs. Golden Link. How could you? You were going to get rid of me. That's why I had to put some of your herbs in the sandwiches and tea. The tea? But I drank it, too. Yes, I know. Oh, you, you've got to help me. It's the antidote. Oh, I don't think there is one, Mommy Dunkel. Your little recipe book didn't have one for hemlock. Hemlock? Oh, you're right. There is no antidote. Well, what's done is done. Oh, why did you do it, child? You were planning to send me away. I heard you. My mommy and daddy were going to send me away, too. They didn't love me, either. But I showed them how much I loved them. I sent them to heaven together, just like you and Daddy Dunkel. You poisoned him? Goodness, no. I used an axe. This is the first time I've ever poisoned anyone. <laughs> you a big house. I didn't want to go to that big house. I didn't like it. Most of the time, they kept me locked in a room. But I got away. And we thought you were rich. I am. Oh, yes. A nice old man who lives in the big house gave me the money. He's got lots and lots of it. General Robert E. Lee gave it to him personally. Oh, golden thing, child. No wonder you remind me of myself when I was a girl. Oh. Oh. Don't worry, Mommy Dunkel. Now that you and Daddy Dunkel have gone to heaven, I'll have to find another family to love. But I'll find one. I'm sure there are lots and lots of people who would like to have a daughter like me. Suspense. In which Mr. Ray Noble starred with Miss Lee Patrick in William and Robeson's production of just One Happy Little Family, an original radio play by John Thornton. Supporting Mr. Noble and Miss Patrick in Just One Happy Little Family were Shirley Mitchell and David Shiner. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Mm-hmm.